and welcome to a special conference semi-final edition of Instant Replay, where I give you my take on the most controversial calls from the first legs this weekend. I'm Simon Ford. We start at Red Bull Arena, where the assistants were really put to work. First, we look at AR Bill Dittmar, who got it right in the 18th minute when he signaled Bradley Wright Phillips for offside. But I'm not so sure about his flag in the 37th minute. On the freeze frame, it looks like BWP is even with DC's Taylor Kemp on the far side. Dittmar's colleague, assistant Kermit Quisenberry, faces a similar play in the 73rd minute, and he correctly keeps the flag down as Peggy Luyindola comes streaking through to score New York's second goal. You see DC's Chris Corp keeping him on. Red Bulls win 2-0. But there's one really bad tackle to review in this one, and it came in the 82nd minute from Red Bull sub Ambrazo Yongo. Look at how he gets up off the ground for this tackle on DC's Sean Franklin. Oyongo's left leg is fully outstretched with the studs up. No doubt that that tackle endangered the safety of his opponent, and in my mind, deserved a red card. But referee Hilario Grajera gives him only a yellow. Now, Grajera, as we've seen with other referees in these playoffs, was loath to show yellow cards early, presumably in an attempt to avoid influencing the series. As you know, two yellows and a player has to sit out the next game. But I still thought Bobby Boswell deserved a card in the fifth minute for stopping a promising attack. And I feel Thierry Henry should have gone in the books for this over-the-top protest in the 80th. And James Olave really ran a huge risk when it looks like he goes in for a head bump on Eddie Johnson in the 28th minute on the heels of a heated exchange between the two. Grajeda spots it and opts to do his best Motrin impression and bring the temperatures down. Moving to Toyota Stadium where referee Alan Chapman had a very clean game. The big decision for him was that 32nd minute penalty kick call after a clear foul by Seattle's Marco Papa on Dallas winger Andres Escobar. The Sounders protest, but it's totally unwarranted. Maybe they should try protesting with Papa, who had no business going in for the tackle in his own box. Mitchell takes full advantage to give Dallas the momentary lead. Next, yet another real tight offside call in the playoffs. It's the 42nd minute, and assistant Paul Scott flags Escobar, but it looks from the replay like Seattle's DeAndre Edlin keeps him on. Sounders goalkeeper Stefan Fry still finds a way to stop Fabian Castillo on the shot. Staying in the first half, we highlight the 19th minute play when Dallas's Moises Hernandez sends a kick into Obafemi Martins. But Hernandez was in the process of shooting the ball when Martins shows up out of nowhere. Not sure there was more the refs could have done there. That's one I consider incidental. Staying in the Western Conference and another offside call under the microscope in Salt Lake. The 23rd minute flag on RSL's Joao Plata. What does the freeze frame say? Looks like LA's AJ De La Garza keeps him on. Assistant Babu Carjalo doesn't see it that way and stops the play dead. Only seven minutes later, it's deja vu. Up goes Jalo's flag in the 30th minute, but Plata's definitely offside there. The other assistant in this game, Mike Rodersman, also came under scrutiny for a goal scored by the Galaxy, which was ultimately called back. Jossi Zardes puts it home in the 37th minute, but he's allegedly offside, although the freeze frame seems to suggest he's in line with RSL's Nat Borcher. There were also some nasty tackles in this one. First, in the 63rd minute, Beltran goes in with what I think is a tackle that endangers the safety of Landon Donovan. It's a high leg, and he goes in with a lot of force. Beltran only gets a yellow. And if you were like me and you thought that was bad, check out Chris Schuler's lunge on Landon Donovan in second half stoppage time. Yet again, we don't have the best angle, but that looked to me to be a studs up straight legged challenge, which I think was worthy of a straight red. Schuler was playing his first game since returning from a broken nose and facial fractures, thus the mask, and LA fans thought he was guilty of a penalty kick foul in the 69th minute when Robbie Keane went down in the box. But I actually think Schuler holds his ground well. Keen is trying to go through him to get to the ball, and you just don't do that with Chris Schuler. Shortly before that play, the broadcasters wanted RSL's Kyle Beckerman to be sanctioned for this cheap shot on Sarvas. After he releases the ball, watch Kyle Beckerman throw a leg into Sarvas right here. And it's subtle, but it's enough to get a yellow card. Yep, they're probably right, but Beckerman finishes the game card free. On to Columbus, where the New England Revolution used set pieces to score the first two goals in a 4-2 win. I would have loved to see a replay on the foul that led to the Revs' first goal. You see here, Will Trapp is convinced he got all ball. But referee Drew Fisher is right there. Charlie Davies proceeds to score the opener from that ball in the box. Then in the 50th minute, it was a brutal foul by the Cruz Tyson Wall on Kellen Rowe that set up the second goal. Wall doesn't even get a yellow here, but I would have been fine with a straight red. Repeat after me, endangering the safety of his opponent. Man, that was dangerous, and so are Chris Tierney left-footed free kicks from that exact range. Another rough tackle, the quote, agricultural challenge by Aaron Schoenfeld on AJ Soares in the 20th minute. 
I think the reaction by the Revs defender makes it look worse than it is. Schoenfeld is late, but from this angle we can see that Schoenfeld's foot hits the ground and barely touches Soares. In fact, he doesn't even get a card. Back to the second half, where we had an off-the-ball sideshow on the goal scored by Lee Wynn. As Wynn makes his run, look at Waylon Francis and Jermaine Jones getting into a bit of a tussle. The angle we have offers very little detail, but I'm struggling to see whether Francis actually makes contact with Jones's face. Whatever happened there, Francis was given a yellow. Another bad camera angle also prevents us from getting a better look at what happened in the 80th minute in midfield, where it looks like Tony Chani has an elbow raise in the direction of Rowe, who takes exception, but ultimately nothing comes of it. No replay was offered to us on the Jairo Arieta tumble in the box in the 87th minute. Referee Drew Fisher was right there and tells the Costa Rican forward to get up. From what we can tell, it looks like the right call. But the crew would ultimately get their penalty kick and perhaps a little bit of a lifeline heading into the second leg. It comes in second half stoppage time and Jose Gonzalez is the guilty party. Would you believe it? A handball we can all agree on. Except for the fact that if we go by the book, Gonzalez, who was already sitting on a yellow, deserved a second caution, an automatic red in my book, not in Fisher's. And then Federico Higuain steps up to convert the spot kick, and there's nothing in the laws of the game against the kick. Oh, that's just downright filthy. And it clearly endangers the safety of Bobby Shuttleworth's pride. That's all we have for this week. For our editor, Abner Aceves, I'm Simon Borg. See you next time.